Wanting to learn home setting skills like how to grow my own food, preserve it, and live a life beyond the beltway and business couldn't have come at a worse time. Maybe you can relate to this 15 second gist of my weekday life. <laughs> can relate. While the details may vary, if you're frustrated, curious, or just wondering is it possible to learn home setting skills in a small space and in your spare time, I'm in the thick of it with you and I'm here to tell you absolutely yes. In fact, I now realize what a blessing our townhouse in the city is and how it will continue to be over the next couple of years. Many of us are becoming farm girls in a small space and in our spare time learning self-sufficiency and sustainability and the legacy of how our families live while also juggling many other things. I hope to give you a glimpse into how you can use a half hour in the evenings, mornings, or weekends to stock your pantry, grow a garden, or whatever else your heart desires. Atomic Habits by James Clear is a best-selling book focusing on how tiny changes make a big difference in your life. This book validates the fact that improving by just 1%, which isn't initially noticeable, is often more meaningful over the long run of months and years. That's why starting small is often better than starting large or perfect or when the timing is right. Y'all, this farm dream that I've got is either going to be won or lost in my spare time. So, welcome to a Friday night in my kitchen. After every one and things are settled, I'll use not more than an hour to tackle a few tasks like prepping food for canning projects the next day or inventorying what I have on hand to make meals or ingredients out of. I share these tasks that require minimal time because it's not only that it helps you develop better results for creating a healthier and more sustainable home, it also changes the belief about yourself. This is because every action is a vote for the type of person you want to be, and you and I are becoming farm girls. These slight changes in your daily or weekly habits will start to guide your life to a very different destination. The effect of automating old tasks combined with learning new ones is a small feat on any given day, but it counts for a lot because habits compound over time. It's the next morning and friends, the prep work I did last night is about to yield four separate projects I tackled first thing in the morning. Can I add that what we call a simple or natural living is what most of our grandparents just called life? While I do appreciate many of the comforts from this past century of progress, I'm equally aware of what we traded away for the conveniences of modern life. They've often moved us further away from our food, our communities, and sometimes even ourselves. I'm convinced there's no better way to enrich your life, yes, right now in a small space and with limited time, than learning about the way things used to be and weaving them into your daily routine. Following even a few time-honored practices and traditions have a simplicity and charm that nourish the mind, body, and spirit. If you're looking to capture your farm girl spirit, work with your hands, make more, buy less, or value quality over quantity, you'll find at least a glimmer of truth in that old saying that happy hands make for happy hearts. It's not about being perfect. It's about making progress. And once you start, you won't want to stop. Speaking of a simpler kitchen, a few months ago, I thrifted an antique tomato food mill, which still has its original 1900 design. I had several gallons of frozen tomatoes I needed to get to, so on this weeknight, my sole project was to assemble the strainer. You don't have to blanch, core, or peel tomatoes, and you get sauce on one side and skin and seeds on the other.
I'm nearly certain that the more I've learned to process my own food, the less cluttered with appliances and tools my kitchen has become. I'm finding that I'm opting for equipment that has stood the test of time in other farm kitchens for generations and the peace of mind that I can buy used but better and won't have to worry about replacing my items never gets old. So here's to small gardens tucked in windowsills or on top of balconies, to small batches of preserved goodness that's been grown or bought, and to the knowledge you will build if you don't stop learning. Because one day your patience and persistence will lead you to the goals in your heart. Y'all, the last three weeks have been crazy. I've been sharing on YouTube for the past year and a half and I have met so many wonderful folks. Leanne from Mennonite Farmhouse, Anna from Fermented Homestead, Diane from The Candy Nana, Jess from The Squeaky Mouse Podcast, Constance from It's a Good Life Farm, and Rachel from That 1870s Homestead have been so kind to me. While once I was able to respond to every single comment in a single day, now it's taking me a couple of days. So if you get a reply from me and you're like, girl, I sent that to you several days ago, please know that I appreciate you and it's not my intention to take so long. In fact, I am replying because your comment means a lot to me. I'm on my journey too, y'all, and that may mean that I'm a few steps ahead of you or maybe you're a few steps ahead of me. And I cannot tell you how much my heart is filled with joy that I am finally meeting you because I spent years feeling crazy, not ashamed, there's a difference, that I was thinking of my current lot as a homestead, not just a town home or apartment. But it's really not so far-fetched because many of y'all are doing the same. And for the OG subscribers that have been around for the past year and a half, I finally got approved for quail. It's just three, but both of my neighbors are pretty cool. One's a baker and the others are hippies. So if my cubby is a bit higher, as long as I regularly slide them some eggs, everything should be okay. Now y'all, given the reality that I have a full-time job that I love and want to maintain until I'm eligible for retirement, my posting schedule is about eh, every seven to 10 days. I'll continue to build my blog on weeknights and evenings and incorporate your wonderful feedback as I find a new groove for this wonderful growing community. It's not just that I'm becoming a farm girl, it's that you are too. So for me, it's Sunday and we went to church and my pastor has this rule anytime he preaches, which is be bright, be brief, be fun, be done. I wholeheartedly agree with that. Here's to tiny changes and remarkable results. Keep becoming a farm girl. I'll see you in my kitchen or garden soon. <laughs>